brothers and sisters, though the Eid has passed, and I pray that Allah accept our Eid, there are a couple of points of reflection that we need in order to prepare for Eid in the year to come. In case we didn't grasp what Eid was really about. For many people, the Eid is a time of celebration, a festival. Not unlike Christmas for the Christians. Gifts are exchanged, time is spent in the playgrounds, the parks, the beaches, etc. It's a day of celebration. And it's not to say that Islam is against enjoyment and happiness. Islam is the way to ultimate enjoyment and happiness. But we don't want to lose the spirit of Eid. As happened to the Christians with Christmas. Because the Eid fundamentally is a reaffirmation of Ramadan. It is a reaffirmation of the basic principles and elements of Ramadan itself. The three basic principles are or were, the establishment of prayer, charity, and the faith community. These are the main three elements. The establishment of prayer, charity, and the faith community. That is why Eid began with Salatul Fajr. That was the day of Eid. The first thing we did on that day was Salatul Fajr. That's what we were supposed to do. For those people who spent the night in celebration and missed Salatul Fajr, they just undermined their whole Eid. I'm not going to say that the Eid had no value, but they just sabotaged their Eid. Those who missed Salatul Fajr on the day of Eid. And there were many. The numbers I saw during Ramadan for Salatul Fajr I didn't see on the day of Eid. They were preparing to come for Salatul Eid, but which was the most important? Salatul Fajr or Salatul Eid? Salatul Fajr. So, the most important element of that day was lost for many. Salatul Fajr was reinforced for those 29 days, every single day, Salatul Fajr. And that's why the masjids were full. It was reinforced by the principle of delayed Suhoor. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had said <clears throat> that the Ummah would be in success 
as long as they delayed their suhoor and hastened their iftar. Delay their suhoor and hastened their iftar. Why? What is the issue about delaying suhoor? Because the delayal of suhoor ensures fajr. That's the point. It's not about that meal. Yeah, you could eat the meal earlier. It's the same meal. The meal doesn't change in terms of the time. Whether you do it delayed or you do it early or you do it in the middle of the night, whatever. But the Prophet ﷺ stressed delayal of that suhoor. Delay it. To the last minute, your suhoor ends with the adhan of fajr. That is the best suhoor. Ending with the adhan of fajr. Why? Because then it's easy to go from there to the masjid. You're up already, everything is in place. Very easy to go and pray Salat al-Fajr. Salat al-Fajr, which is normally the most difficult Salat. Salat al-Fajr, which is normally the most difficult Salat. About which the Prophet ﷺ had said the distinction between the believers and the hypocrites is Salat al-Fajr. Salat al-Fajr. So that delayed suhoor reinforced Salat al-Fajr throughout Ramadan. Salat al-Fajr. And we all know the importance of Salat. Salat in Islam. After the declaration of faith, it is the first thing which is obligatory on us. If we fail to establish the Salah, we have failed with our Islam. We can fast every Ramadan, make Hajj, give Zakah, everything else, but if we don't pray, there is no Islam. Salatul Fajr. So, the Eid began with Salatul Fajr, the day of Eid. Then, before we pray Salatul Eid, and Salatul Eid is also reinforcement of Salah, Salah in, in Jama'ah, but primarily Salatul Fajr, this is the principle of establishing worship of Allah as the foundation of our day. We enter into every day based on the worship of Allah. So, Salat al-Fajr stressing also the importance of the goal of fasting and Salat al-Fajr. That the goal of fasting, Allah said what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order that you would increase in God consciousness, that you would gain a consciousness of Allah, which would protect you from evil. What did Allah say in the Quran about Salah? He said, Aqim is Salah Lidikri. Establish the Salah in order to remember me, to have a consciousness of me, to be conscious of me. So the same goal. The fast, the Salah. But before we go on to do Salatul Eid, we are obliged to give charity. 
we are obliged to give charity. That charity was the implementation of the charitable nature which the fast was supposed to create in us. Because as we were fasting, hungry, thinking about those who were not fasting because they chose to fast, but because they had no food, those who are starving around the world. That was supposed to motivate us to want to help them, to empathize, to sympathize with them. That principle of sympathy and empathy was then translated into action by Zakatul Fitr, Sadaqatul Fitr, which had to be given before the Eid prayer. If it was given after the Eid prayer, it's just general sadaqa. Better you do it, but you lost the reward, the great reward of sadaqatul fitr. So that was the second principle. Charity, feeding the needy. And you know that charity, we have zakah, the principle of zakatul fitr is different from zakah. Both of them involve charity, obligatory. But zakah is for those who have wealth, the wealthy amongst us, relatively wealthy. You have wealth which you have not used for a year, you pay zakah on it. You're a, you've got surplus wealth. So that zakah is for the wealthy. But zakatul fitr is for everybody. As long as you have enough to give a plate of food to somebody else, you must pay your zakah. It's for everybody. So it's telling us that the principle, this is not a thing for the wealthy. It is about a charitable nature. It is about generosity. Giving from what you have. That even the people who would normally receive zakah throughout the year, they would receive zakah, these people are required to give. Because no matter how poor you are, there are people who are poorer. That the poor would also recognize Allah's bounties and mercy on them. So this was the spirit. Of course, what has happened is that we have lost this spirit and understanding of what is involved. And it has been replaced by the Christmas spirit, giving gifts. So this is the day you give gifts, everybody gives you gifts, and you give gifts to your kids and it's a day of exchanging gifts, but that's not what Eid is about. Not to say to give a gift. It's not good. Prophet ﷺ said, give gifts and build love. Give gifts and build love. It builds love. But that was not the primary principle of the Eid. But this, for many of us, is what has it become. It's like Christmas. The kids are all waiting. We just don't have a Christmas tree. But the kids are all waiting. Where's my Eid at? Where's my Eid gift? You know, like my Christmas present. So it is important that we teach our children 
the true message of Eid. That message of generosity, of sharing, sharing with others, and not get lost in the present giving. Very important. The third element, the element of the faith community. What unites Muslims all over the world? We all fasted together, all around the world. The whole world got a message. The Muslim community was fasting. We were united by that principle of faith, fasting for one month every year. Salatul Eid was a reinforcement of that community. We didn't pray Salatul Eid in our local mosques, maybe some places where they didn't have a place large enough to hold the prayer, they did it in some mosques. But in general, Salatul Eid is prayed in open area. Musalla al-Eid. Eidgah. Whatever. This is the place now where the people who normally prayed in their local masjid, who then pray in the biggest masjid of their area for Juma, now go to this larger area beyond the Juma where all the people were praying Jumas, they all now come to this area and pray together. This is the faith community. Reviving the faith. That bond of faith. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى That bond of faith which holds us and unites us, which goes above nationality, nation, tribe, etc. Though to a certain degree, we can see elements of tribalism in the Eid greetings after the Salah. All the Pakistanis give greetings to Pakistan. All the Filipinos give greetings to the Filipinos. And even amongst the Filipinos, the Tausugs do it together. And the Maranao do it together. We see this. Indians gathering, giving, sharing. And that's not a good sign. It's a sickness. It's a sickness. Not a good sign. For me, I greeted everybody. And if there were Jamaicans, I would not have been just hanging out with Jamaicans anyway. So it's not by default. But the people of all the different communities, they greeted me. But that's how it should be for everybody. We, be, we greet everybody, everybody who's next to us, everybody who's around us. Not just go looking for our Indian brothers or Pakistani brothers, Filipino brothers. And go greet them now and eat. It's not to say we cannot also communally gather, you know, have something together for our communities, whatever. No harm. But the Eid, after Salatul Eid, that faith community gathering, we break down now into tribalism. Immediately after the Salah. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. And when we have our gatherings, we should invite people from the other groups. Don't let it be a Pakistani thing. Or an Indian thing. Or an Egyptian thing. Don't let it be that. If you do, Shaitan has won. Shaitan has succeeded in sabotaging the Eid. 
So these are thoughts that we need to take away from Salatul Eid, our Eid day. To reflect on, there's another Eid coming up. Let us not repeat the mistakes of this Eid in that Eid. Or next year after Ramadan. Let's establish that Salatul Fajr. Let's establish generosity, charity. We have the need in our communities now, those who are suffering in Syria, Palestine, Ethiopia, Burma, Afghanistan, so many places people are suffering. Give. Make an effort. Teach our children to give. And the community. Keep it alive. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our ignorance and our tribal distorted and deviant love and replace it with the love of Islam and the love of the Ummah wherever they may be and I ask Allah to forgive the other errors that we made on the day of Eid and make our coming Eid a day that we can truly remember as one in which we have worshipped Allah on that day. Salatul Eid was on the first day of Shawwal. A day in which fasting was prohibited. Regardless of the circumstance, to fast on that day was now haram. After 29 days in which fasting was fard, we have a day in which fasting is haram. And that day is the transition into the new year to come. However, that new year has with it further blessings from the fast. Because the message of the fast, being not restricted to Ramadan, but a message for life, for living Islam, in the mercy and grace which Allah bestows on us, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, informed us that if we fast six days of Shawwal, having fasted the days of Ramadan, we get the reward of fasting a whole year. In some narrations, fasting a lifetime. We do it every year, then it becomes the fast of a lifetime. We get the reward for the whole year. That is generosity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we would get so much just for those six additional days. As there was worship of a thousand months for praying in the night of Laylatul Qadr. There are other days weeks, months, throughout the year that Allah has multiplied the reward. Shawwal, the six of Shawwal are among them. Six days. And those six days can be any six days. It doesn't have to start from the second of Shawwal. It can start at any point. But 
if we have missed fasts from Ramadan for the women, for men who are traveling or missed days because of illness or whatever, we should do those compulsory fasts first. Because those compulsory fasts that we missed, they are fard. The obligation. The sixth of Shawwal are Sunnah, recommendation. And obligation comes before recommendation. Obligation comes before recommendation. So we should do those missed days first. Having done them, then we can choose any days to do the six. Do them all together, one after the other, like we did in Ramadan. Do them every other day or two in a week or however we want to do it, we can do it. It's any six days. It's just an additional six. The six are just a reminder just an encouragement for us to keep fasting alive beyond Ramadan. It's sending a message. Fasting is a part or should be a part of our lives. A continual part. Not something once in a year. No, fasting should be there regularly. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ told us about the three days at the middle of the month of the full moon, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of every lunar month. We're encouraged to fast on those days. Special reward for it. And to fast every Monday and Thursday of every week. Special reward. These are reinforcements throughout the year. If we practice that, then truly fasting will be an element of our lives. We need to revive that. Only few people fast Mondays and Thursdays. Most people didn't even know about the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Many of us are not using the Islamic calendar, so we can't even figure it out. When, when is the 13th, 14th, and 15th? But Mondays and Thursdays, at least, those are days we can figure it out. We need to bring it back alive. Do it with the family. Don't just do it by yourself. Do it with your wife and children. Everybody. Mondays and Thursdays. Establish it. Invite your friends. Break the fast together. You get the reward of them breaking fast at your hand. These are among the blessings that Allah SWT has given us in our lives through fasting. So, please, Establish these six. Don't let them go this year. We often leave it till the last minute, till the last week, last few days. Things happen and then we end up not doing it. Or only doing a couple of days or whatever. The Eid has passed. One, two, three days gone. Bye. Now it's time. Let's get serious about this about Islam. This is part of seriousness. People say, well, no, there's a bigger thing. You know, there's Syria. There is Palestine. That's what we should be talking about and going there. But hey, if we can't get serious about the basic things, believe that the serious things, the real big things, we're not going to be able to handle. This is reality. Those things that are within our ability, within our grasp, that we can do, we don't do them, 
know that when the time comes to do the big things, you're not going to be able to do them. So this is training. Training to be serious about the deen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring the reality of the six days of Shawwal back into our lives. To make it a part of establishing regular fasting throughout our lives. I ask Allah to give us the full reward of these six days and to make it a part of the lives of our children and our communities. I ask Allah to protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine and to protect our brothers and sisters in Syria and in Egypt and in Ethiopia and all around the world. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our gratitude for what he has given us here. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring the security that we have here to the other parts of the Muslim Ummah. And I ask Allah to forgive our sins, our errors, our transgressions, and those of our families and those who have passed away. I ask Allah to allow us to die and leave this world believing firmly in him and in his messenger. Aqim as-salah.